At a recent meeting of the Seniors Computer Group, Dick Lennon suggested that I put together a mini seminar on sending attachments to emails and the process for attaching those files or photos or whatever to the emails you want to send. This is my attempt at doing that. The first thing I want to say is that the procedures are different for every email program. Some of them are quite similar, but there are differences. So I'm going to go through several email programs to explain this. But there are some basic things that you can look for and that will help you if you remember these basic things. It will help you uh, when you when you go to your particular email program, even if it's not one that I cover in this mini seminar. First of all, look for the paperclip. That seems to be the universal symbol for there is an attachment to this email somewhere, either in the process of attaching the file, or when you get the email somewhere, you will see a paperclip. And clicking on it usually starts the process that you're working on, whether attaching or viewing after you get it. Second of all, in lots of email programs and other programs, there are icons at the top of the page. And if you hover over those icons, they often tell you what they're about. So if you will ho hover over the icons at the top of your email page, and if the word attachment pops up over one particular icon, that is probably the place that you use to start the process. And of course, the standard thing for all things that, uh, gee, I know this is here somewhere, but I don't know where it is, those kinds of questions, click help and search for attachment. Before I get to the individual email programs and their methods for attaching things, I want to be sure that you understand the two types of email programs that exist. The first one is a standalone program, one where you start the program on your computer, your emails are downloaded to your computer, that's where you read them in that separate program, and that's where you compose emails in that separate program. Some examples of that are Eudora and America Online. The second type is web-based. It's where you go to your web browser, Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome or whatever you use, and there you go to a website which has all your emails on it after you sign in, and you read and compose your emails on your web browsers. The emails stay on the web. You can't see them without internet service. Now, an example of that is also AOL, because AOL is one of those email services where you can do it either on a standalone program in your computer or on the web. Here's a web-based program, Gmail. Here's a web-based program, Yahoo Mail. Here's a standalone program, Outlook. Here's another standalone program, Eudora. Here's another standalone program, Windows Live Mail. And AOL has both. I think there's some others that have both, but since I use AOL, that's the one that I'm, the only one that I'm really familiar with uh, using both modes. So let's start with the first email program, Gmail from Google. It's web-based, so I will go to my browser where I have Gmail on the screen. I'm not going to show you how to uh, 
bring up your email program for each one of these. I'm assuming you, you all know that. We're just going to cover how to, what to do when you get there. So when we get there, we are going to click Compose. And when we get there, we will send, compose an email to uh, Hank D from SD at AOL.com, and it will, and the subject will be how to attach a photo to Gmail. And lo and behold, down here at the bottom, we find a paper clip. I'm going to click the paper clip, which says attach files. And it brings up a file upload page, which, of course, is my portion of Windows Explorer that shows my entire computer, starting with uh, documents, uh, music, pictures, videos. This is in pictures. It is a picture of a place in Hawaii. And the first file that I'm going to attach is this one here. I select that and open it. And slowly, Holly Keep a Golf Course Home Resized.jpg is attached to this email. Now I am going to uh, go over here to the Insert Photos place. But before I do, let me type some text in this. I'm going to say attached is a photo of Halekipa and below is a view from its deck. And I'll put my cursor right here. Now I'll go down to the insert photos and I will, it gives me an, a, a ch an option of putting in a web address or going to my computer. I'm going to go to my computer. It's going to take me back to the same place because I've practiced this before I started recording. And it's going to show a view from the deck of that place. And when I open it, and then here, that puts this, this uh, picture on the add an image window. And when I click OK, it puts it in the email under the text that I just typed. And the other photo is still attached. Now I'm going to send this email to myself, then go over to my email program and let you see how it sh works on AOL. I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. There it is. It just arrived. So now we go to AOL and we find a message from Hank D from SD at gmail.com. And if I click on that message, I will see that there is an attachment at the top and that the message that I, uh, the, the photo that I inserted is in the text of the email. In, for my particular email program of AOL, it also shows the attached image down below the end of the text. Now, some email programs don't do that. Sometimes when you attach an image and it gets to the other place, all you see is a box with a red X in the upper left-hand corner, and you don't actually see the image that was inserted. I think it's safer to attach this. And when you do, and when you, when you, if all I had done was to attach this image, and if I were using an email program that did not put attached images down at the bottom, I would have to click on this attachment and I would then have to pick the place to open this attachment. It, it, it will look because it knows it's a JPEG. So 
for my computer, I have that set so that JPEGs, JPEGs received as attachments are opened with Picasa Photo Viewer. And when I click on that, I get a new window popping up of that picture. I could, of course, have inserted something else in this message or any other message. Excuse me, I could, of course, have attached anything else. I could attach any kind of file that is in my computer to this email message, like, uh, like the text, um, let's see, like the text for this document that I have just been showing you. Here is, uh, here's Camtasia Studio. And here is my file for this presentation. And here is sending attachments to emails dot doc. That's the file that you have been looking at here. When I first opened uh, my Gmail account today, uh, Google sent me a, a message. When I was preparing to, to start recording this mini seminar, Google sent me a message about a new capability in Gmail, and I find it interesting enough that I'm going to include it right here. If you'll notice down here at the bottom, the first one of these things that pop up says, insert files using Drive. Uh, Drive is the new name for Google Docs, which is a place that where you can store almost anything. Uh, files, or uh, Word documents, spreadsheets, uh, you name it, photos. Uh, and when you click there, it says this, which fascinates me. It says, goodbye attachments, hello Google Drive. Google Drive is the one place to create, share, and keep all of your stuff. You can now insert files up to 10 gigabytes in size stored in Drive right into emails. I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to find something large in my computer and now insert it here and send it to myself. And we'll see, because sometimes that's a, that's a big deal for me. Um, I sometimes would want to send one of these mini seminars to someone by email. But they are all huge because they're video files. And I haven't found a way to do that. Let's try. So let's go find one of my recent uh, mini seminars. And um, I'm going to use the one on FreeCycle which is uh, 12 megabytes, almost 13 megabytes in size. And it says on this uh, Hello Google Drive, it says drag files here. Let's see if that works. Uh, looks like it. Drop your files here. So now what happened? Yeah, free cycle right there. Uh, upload. Uploading one of one. So now if I go to um, my Google Drive, which is here, maybe I will see. Aha, I do. I will see FreeCycle right here on my list of things in Google Drive. So now let's go back to composing a message once again to me. Uh, this time the subject is uh, sending large files. Uh, Google says you can send very large 
files from uh, drive. Here's a test. <laughs> All right, let's see. My drive. Oh, here we go. Okay, we select this. Aha! And now it says insert. There we are, FreeCycle MP4. Now, what happens if I send it? I have a feeling this is going to take a while to get to my AOL inbox. No, here it is, sending large files. Google says you can send very large files from Drive. Here's a test. I guess you click on it. And by George, there it is. In case you don't know about it, there is a place called FreeCycle, which is a great place to get rid of or find things that are just too good to go in the landfill, but no longer does it no longer. I think it works. So we have covered Gmail, a web-based email program, and how to attach a file, how to insert a file, and how to send a large file using Google Drive. By the way, that large file was some 12 megabytes. So that is quite a capability. Now, if you want to run home and send all your friends a, a huge file uh, that's on your computer, uh, if it's, uh, you end up, you need to put it in, in Google Drive, and there's some more things you need to know about Google Drive. I'll show you just one of them. Right now, this uh, free cycle item on Google Drive uh, is set so that no one else can see it except me. In order to fix that, you have to go to share for Google Drive for uh, free cycle MP4, and you need to change this private only the people listed below can access. And uh, you would need to either make it public which I will do in this case, and save it, or fix it so that anyone who has the link can see it. There is a whole separate mini-seminar on Google Drive on my list of mini-seminars. You might want to spend some time there. All right, let's move on to Yahoo Mail, which is a web-based email program. I, uh, the fastest way for me to get there is to go to a Yahoo group to which I belong and uh, click Mail up here at the top of the Yahoo page, which brings up my Yahoo Mail page. I, I don't read this. I don't go here, but I keep a Yahoo. Uh, I, I keep a Yahoo email address, and I I use it to send to, to places where I think they're going to spam me. So I get the spam in my Yahoo mailbox instead of my regular mailbox. Okay, let's compose a Yahoo email with an attachment, and lo and behold, there's the friendly paperclip. Once again, I'm going to send this mail to, whoops, I'm going to send this mail to Hank D from SD at AOL.com. The subject is going to be uh, attachments in Yahoo Mail. And I am going to click the, and I'm just going to type test here, put some text in the text box, and then I'm going to Send uh, my uh, friendly Holly Keepa picture 
again, just as an attachment. And it puts it up at the top to show that there is an attachment. And I send it. And then I go over to my AOL mail. And hopefully, very soon, there it is. So, once again, I receive it as a, an attachment up at the top, and AOL shows me one attached image down below. Let's go back to Yahoo and see if we can compose an email and insert a, uh, a picture into, into that email. Once again, I'm going to send it to myself. This is going to be a uh, inserted photo. I'm going to put test and then put the cursor down here. Now, in order to insert, you don't have a, a, a place in, um, in Yahoo Mail to insert, I don't think. At least I don't know about it. But very often, you can copy and paste a picture into the text. To do that, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to my uh, list of pictures. I'm going to double click on this photo, which is going to open that photo up in uh, Picasa. I'm going to right click on the photo, click copy, and then I'm going back to the text here of the outgoing message. I'm going to right click and left click paste. And aha, there is the photo. Now let's send this to AOL, and we'll see what shows up over there. And there it is from uh, Hank D from SD at Yahoo.com in my incoming AOL mail. And when we open it, well, what do you know? There's no picture here. I inserted it in the Yahoo outgoing email but it does not come over to America Online. And that illustrates what I said before. Sometimes emails are inserted, not attached, but inserted in the text of, of an outgoing email, do not show up in an email that is opened in another service. I demonstrated that it works from AOL to AOL, but it obviously here does not work from Yahoo to AOL. All right, now we will go to uh, the first standalone program, Outlook, and show you how to uh, uh, attach an item to an outgoing email in Outlook. I can't send it in Outlook because I don't have an Outlook email account set up, but I can show you how to, uh, how to um, attach something to an outgoing Outlook email. I have to, this is a standalone program, which means I have to open the Microsoft Office Outlook uh, program in my computer. It's uh, from Office 2003. And when I get there, uh, normally I use this for contacts. I can address envelopes uh, this way. But you can compose email, outgoing email messages in it. You uh, pick the, uh, the place where you want to compose this and you go up to the top and it says new mail message you click there and it brings up a form and I could type an address in here doesn't matter since I'm not going to send it and lo and behold there is the paperclip and it says insert file and 
once again, it brings up the last place I was in uh, Windows Explorer. I was actually saving the various recordings that make up this mini seminar. But uh, in this case, I will go to, um, let's see, I will go to, oh, come on, Henry, where are you? I know. My pictures, that's where I'll go. And I'll go to photos, and I'll go to Hawaii photos, and I'll go to Princeville photos, and current choices and the top six. And there will be the picture that I have been using to demonstrate. And when I click insert, it will say that there is an attachment. In this case, it says insert, but it really is an attachment. Isn't that interesting the way different programs use different terminology to mean the same thing? Here is the attachment. And if I had an email program set up in Outlook, I could now send this message. I probably should put a set subject in it. But I think that, that uh, shows what I want to show for Outlook. Now let's go to another standalone program, Eudora. Once again, I have to open the program in my computer. It says it's not currently the default mail program. Would I like to, to be the default mail program? Of course, I say no because I'm really using AOL. But um, here is Eudora. Now, I don't see any paperclip. Well, here's a good example of where you need to pay attention to the pop-ups. Here is one of them that says new message. Here is another place where if I click message, it says new message. So one of those two, I'm going to click, I'm going to pick this one, and it brings up the window for composing a message. So I can send it to... Hank D from SD, um, I can uh, uh, I can pick a subject which is uh, attaching files in Eudora, and now I have to find where and how I attach something. Well, I could go to the help program or the help file and uh, click topics and then click uh, find and then put in something that says um, attachments but I think what I will do instead of that is I will do the hover over icons thing again reply reply all forward open previous message open next message ah ha attach file so if I click there, it pulls up an attach file window. I can find my, uh, let's see, that's the one that I've been using. I click attach and the file is attached. And if I were set up to use Adora and for my outgoing email, I could now send this, send this email with that attached file. Moving along to Windows Live Mail, which is another standalone program. I need to find it in my uh, computer. It is, there is no more, um, there is no more Outlook Express in Windows 7 and 8, but there is Windows Live Mail. When I click that, Windows Live Mail 2011 will start and it will give me an option of creating a new email message.
And when I create that email message, very important thing here, of course, I can find the paper clip to attach the file. It will bring up my uh, Windows Explorer again. And I could navigate through here and find that picture, but I think you know enough to do that yourself now. Finally, moving along to AOL. You click on the Compose Email box. It brings up a form, and there is the usual paperclip. If you're using the standalone version of AOL, you click on Write an Email Message, and there is no paperclip, but there is a very clear box that says Attach File. So, that's it. I hope I have covered the process for attaching an email to your particular email program. Uh, if I haven't, I hope I've given you enough uh, search tools so you can figure it out for yourself. If not, give me a call.